Hello, I'm Dr. Johnny Johnson, a postdoctoral researcher at the Brain Development Imaging Lab at San Diego State University, and I study eyewitness memory development in those with and without autism. Because our understanding of how eyewitness memory operates in autism is limited and understudied, these individuals may experience exclusion from adequate legal services and may be barred from the pursuit of justice. I'm using imaging data to help examine how memory structures are connected and communicate with areas associated with language, social interaction, and other cognitive abilities to help reconcile if memory is diminished in autism or only appears that way because of how it's assessed. The results will help our understanding on how to collect accurate eyewitness accounts from those with autism and form more appropriate expectations. My intent is to ensure that all individuals experience fair treatment, inclusion, and have access to due process within our legal system by using science. Hi, I'm Nate Stockham, and I'm a graduate student in neuroscience in Dennis Wall's lab at Stanford University. Now, in the Wall lab, we study autism from several sides from behavior to microbiome to genetics, and I study the genetics involved in autism. I focus on families with several children on the spectrum, contrasting and comparing the behavior and the genetics of siblings. Now for siblings, there are different types. There are identical twins, there are fraternal twins, and there are full siblings, and each type shares different amounts of environmental and genetic factors. Using this fact, I can split up the genetic and environmental factors into models that let me predict the differences between sibling types. For example, if the primary factor is genetic, then we would expect identical twins to have more similar behavior than fraternal and full siblings, because identical twins share all of their genome. Doing this for all combinations of factors and sibling types, I can determine which models fit the data and which ones don't. This approach is taken from artificial intelligence research and is called structured causal modeling. And using it, I can determine which hypotheses are and are not consistent with the data, thereby narrowing the focus for future autism research. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Sarah Dada, and I'm beginning my PhD work with Dr. Annie Vogel Siernia at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. And I'm interested in identifying common pathways and gene targets for therapeutic development for autism spectrum disorders. My project focused on how environmental risk factors and genetic risk factors for autism will um, work together to alter gene regulation during development. And I use a combination of mouse models as well as next generation sequencing and computational methods to really examine mechanisms by which genes are regulated in normal brain development and how these genes might be misregulated during autism spectrum disorders. We've identified several epigenetic mechanisms that appear altered in early brain development, both in autism spectrum disorder brains and in mouse models. And since these mechanisms indicate a change in the immune system, we're going to look at the brain's resident immune population, called the microglia. Overall, we hope to find an immune-based therapeutic that will allow uh, for autism spectrum disorders as well as other brain development disorders. Hello, my name is Mirabel Pelton. My research asks why autistic people experience more thoughts of wanting to end life than other people. So if this is a topic that you don't want to think about right now, then please stop this video now. So we know that social belonging and feeling autonomous are really important to autistic quality of life. But also we know that as a society, schools and employers, we're not that good at providing it. And even law enforcement services don't always offer the same protection from harm to autistic people, meaning that they're more likely to experience victimisation and abuse. So my research asks whether these feelings of not belonging, feeling like a burden on others, and experiencing traumatic life events are more common amongst autistic people, and whether they may be linked to thoughts of wanting to end life. I'm also interested to know whether the way we capture these feelings in questionnaires is similar or different amongst autistic people, and I hope through my research to produce to improve interventions and improve support. So please, let me know what you think of my ideas, 
and do get in touch if you want to be involved. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rebecca Jones and I'm an assistant professor at Wild Cornell. I direct a lab that studies social behavior and brain development in autism using a variety of different tools. We are trying to understand how to improve treatments in autism. When research participants come into the lab, they engage in face-to-face -face interactions with someone from our team. These interactions help us understand different aspects of social skills and cognition. We create fun and flexible iPad games that can be personalized for research participants' interests. We use these games to help us understand the development of learning, attention, and self-control in autism. We use brain imaging to understand the neural pathways that are important for these skills. We can use this knowledge to improve treatment and maybe even predict what treatments will work or not. Wearable devices like high quality microphones and these glosses with an embedded camera allow us to get detailed information about things like eye contact and language. These devices can also be worn outside the lab, and so we use these as well as smartphone apps to help us understand the day-to-day -day experiences of people with autism and their families. Hi, I'm Dr. Caitlin Hudak, a research scientist at the University of Washington. I work closely with Dr. Rafe Bernier on projects targeting potential brain biomarkers of autism. Our goal is to understand how individual differences might actually be alike within certain subgroups of children with autism. And our primary hypothesis is that children who have a shared genetic background will also have a shared biology, um, so that we would see similar brain patterns. So what we do is we use a genetics first approach and bring in children who have a disruptive genetic mutation, such as CHD8, we capture these brain responses and study how these biomarkers are distinct from other subgroups. And we believe that this is going to be absolutely critical as we narrow down potential um, and most effective treatments. And ultimately, it's the families that motivate me every single day. And I'm proud to move the science forward and really, really grateful to be able to work with so many wonderful families.